What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here today to have a little uh, little chit chat about the whole Hasbro Magic the Gathering collectors take back their hobbies uh, kind of chit chat or discussion that's been going around lately across really a lot of different collecting segments. Uh, I'm going to talk for just a little bit here at the beginning, and then I'm actually going to cut to a clip from the live stream that I did Saturday night. I had a live stream Saturday night about an hour and a half into it. Uh, myself, Dustin, Sports Card Dad, and uh, Mickey from Swaggle Hoss Comics and Cards or Comics and Games dove into this very topic, and it was pretty late in the live stream, so I, I wanted to clip it out. It's about an eight-minute conversation, so we'll tack that on to the end of this to kind of get some other perspectives, and especially Swaggle Hoss's because he's coming from the comic book side of things, and you're seeing it on that side too. You know, I know primarily my content is focused around cards, but I also, I spend a ton of time in the comic book YouTube space, in addition to the MTG space on uh, on social, and you're seeing it in sports cards as well. There has been this sentiment lately, and it really seems like it has kind of leveled up the last two weeks, and I really think, you know, that this Hasbro MTG pushback sentiment has bled over it, I shouldn't say bled over because I think it was already there I, I make the comparison in uh, the little clip that you're going to watch about you know it, it's kind of like the uh, the seeds of the rebellion you know to, to steal a term from Star Wars uh, I kind of got this idea in my head from watching uh, Andor lately on Disney Plus and you're, you, you see like the beginnings of the rebellion in that show and kind of how it how as the Empire tighten their grip on the people they got more pissed and pushed back and i think you're seeing that now across collectibles in general whether it's the corporations or certain influencers or whatever and once again i'm painting with a very broad brush here as they begin to kind of tighten their grip on things the general people are being like wait a second f this or whatever whether it's Panini, Hasbro, whatnot, you know, it doesn't really make a difference. You're seeing much more pushback against, I don't want to say big business, but how those businesses are operating and how it's trickling down to the average collector slash consumer. You know, Rudy did a rant video on the Hasbro side. You're seeing that on the sports card side. Dustin did one, but you're just seeing more and more sentiment about this. The collectors need to take back their respective hobbies. And once again, I'm, I'm painting with a broad brush here. I'm not strictly talking sports cards because you are seeing it in, at least myself personally, I'm seeing it in comics, I'm seeing it in sports cards, and I'm seeing it in the Magic the Gathering space. Really the only space I'm not seeing it in out of kind of like the bigger, bigger collectible sides of things is the Pokemon space. That side seems to be doing fine. They seem to be having, they seem to have a really good grasp on how much to print, how to handle the player base, collector base, whatever. Whereas some of the other markets right now don't seem to have that. But that spark of rebellion, for lack of a better phrase, definitely seems to be building across a bunch of different bases. I'm curious, are you all feeling that as well? Whether it's the sentiment of the content or just yourself personally, or, you know, as a vibe check for the for the for the viewing audience here, are, are you guys and girls kind of feeling the same way about, you know what? No, screw Panini in there printing a bunch of crap cards. You know, I, I talk about it in this clip that we're going to see. I've done those retail rips recently and I felt kind of terrible after opening them. I mean, yeah, I get a little YouTube revenue off of it and, and whatnot and get some content out of it and all that. So I'm lucky that I get a little bit of, you know, revenue to offset the cost of opening not all of it i've talked about that before and even that like i after i was done i was like why did i open this like this stuff's garbage in most cases even if you pull something halfway decent it, most of the stuff that i opened was damaged the cards had significant damage on them so even on the off chance that you pull something good you also need the odds in your favor that the card actually comes out in decent shape. So uh, let's go ahead and cut to the clip. Like I said, just kind of curious for your all thoughts on, on kind of this shift in mentality. I think we've been seeing it for a while. 
I think, you know, I noticed it in the comment sections for, for a long time, to be fair. But it definitely seems like it has leveled up this last couple weeks. And I don't know if it's just this Hasbro thing kicking it off. I don't know if Rudy just influenced me and is in my head. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm just kind of thinking about this more. Or if it's a combination of that and, you know, I just recently ripped multiple retail rips and just felt totally burned on them. Or just a combination of all of the above. So curious for all your thoughts on that. Let's go ahead and cut to the clip uh, where myself, Dustin, and Swagglehouse discuss this a little bit further. Uh, with that being said, like, comment, subscribe, throw that in here. And then let's go ahead and cut to the clip. We'll catch you guys and girls on the next one. Yeah, and I lied. We'll, we'll, let's. I want to. I want to get the one last thing before we kind of wrap up here. Does it feel like? And once again, I'm just kind of going off of. I, I watch a lot of comic book content, uh, and I'm going to tie this into sports cards too, because there's definitely been a, a movement lately. We kind of talked about this backstage and right when we first started. I don't want to say like Rudy kicked it off or whatever, but there feels like over the last month or so that there's been. I don't want to call it like a revolt, but like a collectors take back their hobby type thing. Mm -hmm. um, on the comic side, I'm seeing a lot of like influencer versus collector kind of tying back into this whatnot stuff too. It's kind of why I wanted to bring this in. And, you know, you're seeing it on the MTG side with this like anti Hasbro, like don't go buy the product, this, that, and the other thing. Do you feel like on the comic book world that that's like, it's kind of like, let's, you know, this uh, collector versus establishment mentality is kind of growing. I, I definitely think it's, yeah. To yes, the answer to your question is yes. I feel like it's growing, or maybe people are. Uh, maybe it was always there, and there's just more of like kind of an uproar of it, and and now it feels like the appropriate time. I, I think I saw some people kind of talking in the chat as we were talking about the 50k thing, where it's like, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just hard to like, you know, flaunt money in when times are tough, and. Similarly, like, as you know, as you talk about in your question where it's like these people who are like kind of selling to make money in comics versus like people who just like want to collect and have stuff in their collection. I think there's, there is this like, you know, um, headbutting culture of it and I don't know where it goes, you know, and, 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 it, and it's kind of a weird thing too, because it's like, yeah, maybe the inf influencer people are kind of seen as like the the antagonists in that situation. Um, but it, but it's such a fine line because it's like clearly people have businesses and sell comics or cards or whatever it is. Like people make money in this thing. And so I don't know if people just, they just don't like to know that. Like like maybe it was always just a little bit better when when there was a little bit of a of a divide of this idea of like, I just showed up to the card show and just this dealer has all these cards. I didn't, I, I'm not thinking about that. They bought it for pennies off of somebody else. You know, I just, mm. I don't want to know that, you know, so you I, I don't see know. How the sausage is made. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, but is that how you guys feel? Yeah. I'll let Dustin chime in here in a second, but yeah, to, to, uh, it, it feels like there's definitely like a, you know, we need to take back our hobby or whatever. And I don't know if it's just that, you know, people are sick of a lot of like the nonsense that's going on right now across both, spaces or what but it definitely feels like that sentiment is growing i don't i mean dustin you did basically a, a, a mini rant video on this the other day that we kind of jokingly with you off the start but i, I mean I, I feel like on the sports card side the vibes are strong of like there's definitely i'm actually gonna compare i'm watching andor a lot like andor is freaking fantastic on disney plus if you're not watching it it definitely feels like the spark of the rebellion and like the the establishments the evil empire and, you know, the Rebel Alliance is growing to kind of take down the uh, the Death Star, for lack of a better term. I mean, yeah. Dustin, I feel like you have intimate knowledge on this because you just did the rant video on it on Thursday or Friday, whenever that was. Well, I think kind of coupled with Rudy kind of going full bore on Hasbro for overprinting and really kind of making it clear that they're going to print to the moon. Um and this is something that we've seen on the sports card side. I got some pushback where it's like, hey, you know, that situation is very different than sports cards. But I, I think that it's not that different in the sense that sports card printing has really been ramped up. We, and we've seen it in a lot of different ways. Select being an example of something that was hobby only, and then mm -hmm. it goes to retail. And then it's like, whoa, what are we doing? You know, Panini and, and Tops and, you know, they're now granted, 
they're trying to print to demand, but the problem is, is it doesn't happen quick enough. You know, it's like when the demand is Client there, indicator. the product's yeah. not there. So now we're like two years later and they're like, oh, okay, yes, let's go ahead and meet that demand. And the demand mm -hmm. is not the same. You know, that's shifted, you know, to where I don't want to see just all new product be garbage. Like, I don't want to say garbage, but you know, 91, 92, 93, when you go back, I mean, and not that everything has to be worth money and all of that, but it would be nice to have some rarity. And, you know, when you see it kind of just going in the direction of we're just going to print everything to the moon, then yeah, you kind of want to push back a little bit. So with Rudy's kind of rant, I think that kind of inspired me to, you know, talk, I've been talking about that though, for a couple of years with, with new products on the sports car side. Um, you know, and then it kind of goes to other parts of just companies where it's like, look, if you've got higher ups that are flexing on, you know, the average collector slash speculator, or whatever. Yeah. During these times, it's just not great timing. It's not great optics when, you know, yeah, you're a multimillionaire and you're flexing on your customers basically. And it's like, yeah, maybe save that when, you know, for like boom times or whatever, yeah. when nobody cares. Yeah. And it's just not good timing right now for that. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. And to your, yeah, I, I agree. Like the Hasbro to sports card things, I, I could see where people be like, it's not apples to apples, but I think it's closer than people want to realize. And I think, you know, I brought up the select thing in my video when I talked about it. I think that's like literally the thing you could point at and be like, hey, this is Panini doing exactly what Hasbro is doing right now on a, on a more micro scale. And on the sports card side, it's scary because, <laughs> and once again, I talked about this in the video that I did on it, Panini doesn't care. Like, they have no long-term vested interest in this. Like, their mm. whole goal, they know they're out. Like, whether it's next month, tomorrow, or a year from now, we know that they're leaving in some shape or form. So they don't care. They have no vested interest in the long-term stability of it, like a Fanatics does. I mean, you would think Hasbro would, but it seems like that they don't uh, to some degree or another. So it, it's just kind of an interesting space. And so now you see the pushback of like, hey, vote with your wallet. Don't buy this yeah. crap. You know, I mean, yeah. and whether and whatever that is, whether it be manufacturing or grading or, you know, whatever hobby supplies or whatever the hell it's like, if they're going to treat us like that, then vote with your wallet. You know, you are kind of seeing some pushback. Yeah. And I was, you know, I was feeling it too. Like part of it was, you know, I've done a couple of retail rips lately, which I don't normally open a ton of wax, but it's like, it was available. It's 60 bucks for a couple of boxes, whatever, you know, I'll open some cars to like to open packs. And you open them and it's like every card's damaged and like everything's junk. And you're just like, like I, I ripped, I did those couple videos. I recorded them like right in a row. They didn't post right away. And then Rudy did that video on Hasbro. And, you know, and it kind of like all, to your point, it kind of like all clicked at once. It was like, you know what? Like, yeah, kind of fuck these guys. <laughs> like, what are, like, at least the card company, at least Panini specifically in, in, in that case, it was just kind of like, what am I doing? Like, I just spent like 150 bucks on this and I, I opened a bunch of cards that were like dinged and scrapes and scratched, like straight or, from the especially when like, like four, Especially when like four years ago, what was a hobby box of Prism? Like $200? You know, I mean, like it was, yeah. it, it was dramatically lower, dramatically. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny. It's like, I, I had the experience and and I, I didn't even know this. Like I, I, like I said at the beginning, like I do work for Magic, but it was only recently, like maybe it was like, I don't know, four months ago or something. I went into a card store and I was, I was interested. I was like, Oh, I kind of want to buy like the stuff I've worked on. And so I, I asked the dude, I was like, so like, what's like, what's the deal like, uh, with, you know, Dominaria box or whatever. And he's like, well, okay. The, well, the collector booster box, like that's one that has like all like the expensive cards. And it's like, okay, but what is, what is the draft box? It's like, well, that's if you want to like buy and play the game and it's like, okay. And then there's also the booster box that you can get. And then it's like, yeah, and then he had one other box and I was just like, why is there four boxes? Like, <laughs> like, what is this? Like, what do you mean that I would have different ones? Like, why wouldn't I, it's like, to me, it was like, isn't there just one, here's the expansion no. that came out. Here's the one set that came out. Like, why are you printing so many different, very specific boxes? And I think even one of the latest sets, they were adding another one. I think Rudy was talking about that, or they were yeah. going to do like another specific type of box. And I'm like, this seems really like not good, it, not good, right? Yeah, it's, it, this seems like not a healthy way to kind of release a new set that we have all these different versions. And I don't know if sports cards is kind of like that, but at least in the magic space, I was like, that seems ridiculous.